I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different organic transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this organic transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. This is a pretty wild looking reaction that's actually pretty simple once you break it down. And this work was published by Tape and coworkers in the publication journal known as Tetrahedron. So it's called Tetrahedron. And it was published in the year 2000 in the volume number 58 and the page number is 8475 for anyone interested in checking out this work. And in this work, we're introducing what are called beta lactams to a strong acid to make what are called quinolins. And that strong acid that's being used is abbreviated as TFOH, but what that means is trifluoroacetic acid. So remember, this is just a proton source. And what will happen is that this nitrogen with the lone pair of on it will actually be protonated by that acid to generate the conjugate base and protonating this nitrogen position. So then the product of this first step is just gonna be that protonated lactam where the nitrogen is now gonna be positively charged. And then the rest of our molecule still looks basically the same where you have this parachlorobenzene. And now remember this nitrogen is gonna be positively charged and that influences what happens next. And what happens next is known as a freeze type of rearrangement. That's F-R-I-E-S. And what will happen is that this lone pair of electrons on oxygen will come down to make a carbon to oxygen triple bond, which is known as a carbonium ion, because what we're gonna do is actually break this carbon to nitrogen bond to make this nitrogen neutral. So then the product of this freeze type rearrangement is going to end up being that carbonium ion, where now we have this positively charged carbon located at this position. Then we have one, two carbons, and then we have this nitrogen still located here, except now this is gonna be neutral with a lone pair of electrons on it. And then you still have your benzene ring located at this position, with that parachloro position on it. And now remember, this carbon is gonna be positively charged, which is gonna make it highly susceptible to nucleophilic attack because it's an activated electrophile. And what you should notice now that we've generated this activated electrophile is that we have a benzene ring around which can do electrophilic aromatic substitution, where these pi electrons will come and attack that carbonium carbon, kicking up these pi electrons to give us that neutral species again. In other words, basically, this is another form of a friedel crafts acylation that you likely learned about in organic chemistry. Because what we We've now generated is going to be an arenium ion located at the fused ring position and here we have that carbon to oxygen double bond and now remember what since we use the pi electrons of benzene this is going to make this carbon positively charged and there is a hydrogen located here and the rest of our pi bonds still remain intact and this is going to be resonance stabilized because these pi electrons are in conjugation with this empty p orbital where the carbocation is so that stabilizes this arenium complex and then all that needs to happen is the conjugate get base that we generated following protonation in the first step can just come in and deprotonate this hydrogen to reform our aromatic ring and give us our final product. So then to recap, what's happening is that this beta lactam gets protonated by a strong acid. This is going to allow this beta lactam to undergo what's known as a freeze type of rearrangement where you generate a highly activated electrophile in this carbonium ion. And then from there, it's just the same sequence of events of electrophilic aromatic substitution that you've likely seen before that eventually get us to this final product, which is known as a quinoline. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, give it a thumbs up down below. And for next week, I'd love to see if you could figure out the electron pushing arrow mechanism for this organic transformation. Drop your thoughts as a comment down below and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out on another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.